All right, time to talk uh, Vandy football here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So I ask that you subscribe, like, and comment if you like what you see, even if you don't agree with us. <laughs> if you love the college football content, uh, you got to subscribe as we get you set for 2018 and SEC, Big 12, and ACC Media Days this week as we are just blasting through the lineup, including those Vandy Commodores with uh, Kate Pearson Halliburton. Kate, how you been? Good. How are you? It's been a long time. I'm doing great. You still doing some fine work there at uh, Last Word on College Football? Trying to, trying to, you know, trying to keep up with the Vandy team. Yeah, so uh, that's your specialty. That's your passion. That's your pride. Yes. And the boys hit the podium today at SEC Media Days in Atlanta. Mm, they did. They did. And Mason, you look sharp as ever. Still the best dress coach in the SEC. Now, see, that's saying something because I know that the uh, the sh the shoe fashion was a big thing for a few years with uh, Dan Mullen and Brett Bielema and yep. a few others flashing the shoes. Once it became kind of trendy to go with the 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 fancy tennis shoes with the suit, uh, that's kind of passe uh, to a certain extent. It's still kind of fashionable, but in terms of it being, hey, this right. is something we need to pay attention to. Uh, that's kind of passed us by, but Derek Mason, you're, you're touting him as the best dressed, best dressed by far. He didn't by far, by far the best dressed. You don't think so? Have you seen the man today? I did not see any of the coverage today. <laughs> he, he was simple today. He had understated elegance, just the gray suit. Um, normally the past years, I think he came out the first year in a bow tie, rocking the bow tie. And then, you know, he's had custom suits with the Vandy player on the inside and stuff like that. Today he was he was understated elegance. The man he you know he just he's he's got a lot more to worry about than clothes, but uh, he he looked good as usual. One win, seven losses in the SEC. Yes, he has more to worry about. So are things going to be better this year? And what gives you hope after listening to your uh, beloved head coach speak? Uh, yes, things will be better this year. We have um, experienced lines on offense and defense, and he said that they have nine three hundred pound linemen on defense which Jordan Rogers made a comment afterwards and said the entire time he was at Vandy, he had three 300 pound players. So I think uh, Mason and his staff has done a great job recruiting, beefing up the lines um, offensively and defensively. They've got 12 returning starters, uh, seven on offense, five on defense. I think that the he's recruited well, his best class by far since he's been there. But I think that they have a retention rate and they have a senior quarterback. I just think it's going to be an exciting offense to watch. They've got, they have three plays for Ralph Webb, but they have four running backs that are just going to be huge, I think. And behind a, a senior line, I think they will do a great job. So, so Kate, of course, we're focused on 2018, but I'm trying to get a better feel for what got us to this spot. So, of course, James Franklin won nine games, two consecutive seasons, won two bowl games. Correct. He left a roster that I would think would have been in decent shape, although they had some departures, as everyone does. Right. Derek Mason comes in, and what I saw was it looked like he was a deer in headlights, not just in terms of the way his football team played, but in the way in which it seemed as though they were not prepared for games. They get uh, just blasted by Temple right out of the gate, and it kind of went downhill from there, and he had that awful first season. Right. Then they bounced back to a certain extent. They won six games. They got to a bowl game. They got blasted in the bowl game, but they did win the six games the next year. And then another down cycle this past season in which they they were somewhat competitive at times, but they only win one game in the conference, and they miss postseason play again. So I'm trying to find where this – I know things have to be done to the maximum degree at Vanderbilt to give yourself a chance to win because of the conference, the division, and how difficult it is to recruit uh, the upper tier athlete to a place like Vandy. Uh, so I know it's difficult. Uh, he's got a number of challenges and hurdles to climb to get past it, but I'm trying to figure out where this program is and whether this is going to be sustainable and he's the right guy. Uh, I think that he has made strides this season to to make it the right program. Stanford is successful academically and on the football field. And I think that he has brought in three guys, three staff members from Stanford that he worked with at Stanford. So I think he is trying to maybe replicate what he had at Stanford. Um, there's no reason Vanderbilt can't be successful. There's no reason at all. I mean, 
yes, you need academics to get into the school, but there's big, smart people out there. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it happen at Stanford. I think that he has made strides. He has given up um, the defensive coordinator role to Jason Tarver, who, again, he brought in from Stanford, and he's been trying to hire the guy for two years. So I think that they think a lot alike. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were co-defensive coordinators at Stanford at one point. So it's kind of, I think that there's going to be, there. It's it's his defense that Tarver is running. So there's no reason that they can't sustain that black death defense, if you will. Um, offense is experienced. It's been under Ludwig now for four seasons. I think that's right. This will be this fourth season. So, I mean, it's, it's, there's no reason that the consistency isn't going to help them. Yes. Vandy has struggled. We know this. They it's, I mean, after that Alabama game last year, which was horrific at best, uh, they, they lost and they lost hard and it was a huge skid. And again, Mason took responsibility for it. Like he does every year, every time there's a loss, he takes responsibility because it is ultimately on him. It's his program. So I have hope as a Vandy fan, I have a hope as a Vandy writer that, you know, they're going to be successful. I think they've got everything in place to be successful. If they're not, then there's something bigger out there that's broken. But I think he has, he has fixed a lot of broken pieces. And I think it was a very broken program after Franklin left. And it was a decimated roster after Franklin left. And yes, Franklin had success, but you know, Franklin's gone and it's Mason's time and it's your number five for him. So I think it's his make it or break it year. And I think he's really going to make it. So, and yes, you know, I, I have the, the Vandy star on my chest and you know, I'm, I'm a fan, but I think that I honestly believe he can do this. There's no reason he can't. So Stanford is the blueprint because that's where he came from. And because there are similar circumstances there. Correct. They also do succeed at Northwestern and Duke, not to the level of Stanford at this point, but uh, somewhat close. Correct. And uh, if they could duplicate uh, what is done in those conferences, that would be a good thing. Typically winning seven or eight games, getting to bowl games on a regular basis at uh, Duke and Northwestern, especially Northwestern. So, and obviously he's, He's lived it there, and he was part of the reason why they were successful there on the defensive side of the ball and, and really masterminded uh, those defensive efforts for teams that won Pac-12 championships and went to the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was the, the theme? Derek Mason, I can imagine, in a locker room as a force to be reckoned with before a game when his teams need either inspiration or a butt-kicking or anything in between, but Correct. certainly those extremes, he would uh, master that. Uh, the guy, uh, the guy means business, and and he is buttoned up. So, uh, what what would inspire you based on what he had to say today? Oh, he he's he's very. I think he's very inspiring. He's definitely got the he's got the passion. He's got the drive. He called out the um, the SEC media for yeah. I think it somebody said that the Arkansas game against Vandy was a gift. And I, I think it's it's funny that Vanderbilt still gets no respect no matter what. I mean, we could we could have an entire team of five star players and still get no respect and you know be considered an easy win, which I think is hilarious. But you know, it is what it is. It's just it's bulletin board material, and it just inspires, it makes his speeches, his pregame speeches and halftime speeches even more legendary because it's just ammunition for him. So he's, he's an inspiring coach. I mean, I want to run through a brick wall every time I hear him talk. So, Well, Kate, it takes a long time to break that stigma. Correct. That's, that's going to take. So when James Franklin was able to do it, it was, oh, isn't this cute? Vandy won nine games and they're in a bowl game. This is cute. And right. then he did it again. It was like, yeah, that this is, this is still just cute. Right. And it's going to wear off at some point. And, and now we're back to a situation where we don't know what Vandy's going to do this year. I would expect, unless you can prove me otherwise, I think it's the worst team in the division, but it's not decidedly the worst. I would, I would, pick Tennessee? The worst. Come on. I don't know. I, I would take that Tennessee roster. I think over that Vandy roster. Wow. All right. But you know more about it. So sell me on this team and start with uh, what you heard out of your quarterback today. So this is something that has changed, that that even when Franklin was winning, the passing game was pretty marginal. Then it was atrocious uh, the first season under um, Derek Mason. It's gotten better because of the quarterback in play, most of all. And Kyle Shermer's done some good things. 
Kyle Schirmer, he, he's a senior. He's got an arsenal of weapons. I mean, we have four running backs that are going to replace Ralph Webb, but we also have tight ends and Sam Dobbs and Jared Pinckney that, you know, are coming into their own. We have re wide receivers that are, you know, great hands. They're fast. There's just, he's just limitless on potential of what of his, his targets that he has. Kyle Schirmer is unfazed when he's standing in the box when he's on the field. He's, you know, got ice water running through his veins. I think that, I think the kid is just, he's come into his own and, you know, yes, he has a huge football pedigree, but he's just, he's, he's a rock solid QB. And, um, it's, there's no, there's no reason he can't be successful. He's got every tool at his fingertips. And I think that, um, he's secure in Ludwig's offense and it should be muscle memory at this point for him. So. All right. Uh, Vandy coming off one and seven, five and seven, I believe with, uh, the big win against Kansas state that gave some hope, didn't it? It did. It was a lot of hope. <laughs> and then, then the big letdown against Alabama. I don't know if that uh, win was perfectly placed because there were some comments made after the game that we all know about that uh, set them up for the big fall against Bama coming to town the next week. Uh, so you've got a lineup in the SEC Eastern Division that you think is uh, can can be managed. You talk about Tennessee. Obviously, they lost every game, and that was your win. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Missouri's getting better. Missouri They've is got most better. likely the best quarterback in the league. And uh, South Carolina has taken off to a certain extent. They still haven't completely sold me after one good year. Yes. And, uh, of course, uh, Kentucky's pretty much um, – what was was uh, in that range where you were for a few years, and uh, they've sustained and gotten a little bit better and inched up into postseason play and uh, lost a couple bowl games the last few years. So, uh, can can you make some um, make some hay in the East? I, I think I think we 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 will win some games that we should have won the past couple seasons. I think that um, we've we've played South Carolina tough every season. Or every yes, every season we played them. Um, I think that there's no reason. Yes, South Carolina is huge right now, though. They're they're favored in a lot of stuff. I don't know. I think that Vandy is going to pull off some upsets that people aren't picking them to win. I, I'm not prepared at this point to to call those games, but I think that there is if they come out firing on all cylinders, like I know they can. If they come out utilizing their personnel to top potential. There's no reason that they can't win some of those games that they've lost in the past. They, they should have beaten Florida the last few seasons. They should have beaten South Carolina. So they're, they play really good teams really tough. So Vandy is going to be fun to watch. This is going to be a fun offense. It's going to be a fun defense. I think that, I think that we are no longer going to be the doormat of the SEC. I will say that. And okay, I've said it before. Hey, you said a lot of things that I love to jump on here. <laughs> <laughs> jump on, jump on. So, so what's what's hilarious is as soon as we dove into the schedule, I looked up the schedule, and I do this with every college football team. I'm sitting here. I look up a schedule. Regardless of the team I just put in, Stanford, well, Stanford might be a bad example too. I go to another uh, team, and I throw in schedule. I Google it, and boom, football comes up number one. Boom, 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 boom. On right. the first page, it's nothing but football. Maybe Duke will have some basketball mixed in or somebody else like Kentucky or uh, Kansas. Right. But for Vandy, I put in Vandy 2018 schedule. What do you think I get? Academics. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All the way down the line. No football schedules. I had to actually put football in there of course. to remind Google that Vandy plays football. So we're just having fun with you, Kate. But that's what <laughs> came up. Right. I get it. I get it. Hey, you know what? It's a great academic institution. Football, football will be there soon. But you've. You, you got to exist in the SEC. So that makes it doubly difficult here. And so I'm looking at the schedule and I see three and one non-conference. Uh, you, you got to go three and one. You've got a trip to Notre Dame. I'm not expecting a victory there. I know that you've got hope, but I'm not expecting a win, but you're not going to get blown off the field by Notre Dame. I, I would say that's going to be a two to three score loss. Okay. And then <laughs> in the, so, so what I look at all the time is we know who you're going to play in the division. That doesn't change. Who do you play in the other division? Well, you've always got Ole Miss, an, another knock I've got on SEC scheduling that, uh, and, and other 
conferences do the same thing. You shouldn't have to play the same team every year, especially when you don't have a legitimate rivalry against them. But right. you've got Ole Miss at home, and then your other game in the other div division is Arkansas. So you pick the two best teams to play in the other division this year. So I can buy into a game at Arkansas. Maybe you win that one and you beat Tennessee and you steal one against a Kentucky or a Missouri or somebody else and you get three wins in the SEC, you're three and five, you win the other three games and you're six and six. That's the best case scenario I can give you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Arkansas has a new head coach. and I, I know it's Chad Morris. I know he's a great coach. But – why why is that why can we not win that game why is that not a, a, a winnable game you know i mean it's it's the best case scenario right but people are picking picking vandy to lose that game already and i'm like nobody's even seen chad morris do anything yet at arkansas so it's 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 frustrating to to see that you know we we're, we're being picked to lose all these games already but you know hey whatever uh, that that makes it that makes it easy for us because when we come out and win games that we're not supposed to win, then then it's it just leaves people in shock. I like the fact that nobody talks about Vandy. Honestly, it makes it easy for me because it's I it gives me more to talk about, but I have no competition in talking about it. But it's it, it, they tend to be overlooked, and that kind of makes flying under the radar is kind of I think is is a nice thing to be able to do as a as a Vandy football team. Because then when you come out and shock the world, you shock the world. So I have yet to release my previews and predictions on all the teams in the Power Five, but I have made my predictions, and they're around here somewhere. But I can believe off the top of my head that I've got Vandy going 4-8 and eight and with one win in the SEC. Okay. That, that's what I'm looking at this year. So, Kate, I hope you still will come back, even though I, I got your team finishing last in the uh, Eastern Division. You will. I will. I will come back because you'll be beating down my door when we when we're, uh, you know, winning. So you mentioned that you believe that Derek Mason can be a success this year. What would be successful to you? I, I think at the very least we need to go six and six. I, but I think that, you know, Mason has a staff and a team in place that there's no reason they can't be more successful than that. I think they can pull out a lot more SEC wins. That's there's there's no reason that they can't. It's just, it's, they're standing in their own way at this point. They've, they've got to go out there and execute and do what needs to be done and not make stupid mistakes. We don't need penalties. We don't need the dumb mistakes that we have made in the past. But we also need the refs on our side. We need the refs to quit making calls against us. I Wait mean, a minute. They're, 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 we, we get a lot of bad calls. Vandy gets a lot of bad calls. Trust me. Greg Skinky and I have talked about this. We tell you. So. You're telling me that if we reviewed the entire season last year, that we would find more bad calls, legitimate bad calls against Vandy than yeah. good calls for Vandy. Uh, yes, I would. I would. I would say yes. Were these in like fifty-nine to three games? <laughs> I'm not talking about the Alabama game. Okay, well, that was fifty-nine to nothing. I was just throwing a score out there, but. Uh, <laughs> No, Vandy gets a lot of bad calls. A lot of bad calls. Oh my gosh! I mean, legitimately bad calls. I'm pretty sure that Mason has probably worn out the the hotline to call and complain in the SEC. He mentions it in almost every press conference. People all ask him, "So, what what calls did you complain about today?" Or what did because they they go over in his weekly press conference, you know, what happens in in, in the SEC calls, and it's. You know, it's it's probably 20 or 30 calls a game. I mean, it's horrible. Wait a minute, Kate. Okay, I can't not 20 or 30. I may be exaggerating. But come on. We get a lot of bad calls. I, I have never heard this. In all the college football that I cover, in everything that I look into, everything I watch, that Vandy's notoriously getting bad calls. I would think oh my anything, God, watch would a be, Vandy game. there would be sympathy for Vandy out there. There's none. The SEC is like, there's no way Vandy could have possibly have made that call, so the refs will just give it to the other team. I mean, there's, there's going to have to watch out for this year. Seriously. I if I watch a Vandy game this year, I'm going to have to look out for that. Oh, you're such a butt. I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna send you, I, I'm going to, I will send you, send you bad calls. You, you got to admit as a neutral college football guy that tries to watch the best games, it's difficult to watch a Vandy game because there are other games going on that are, that are more. That's what DVRs appealing. are for, Mark. They're more important. 
Uh, I'm trying to think when I watched oh. Vandy play last year. Vandy, Vandy, Vandy. When did I see Vandy play last year? You didn't watch a Kansas State game? I There was another game that was more important that was better. I checked in on the Kansas State game. I did DVR that game, and I did watch probably three quarters of the Kansas State game. But there was another game that was that was better at the time, at least one. But I did watch a good portion of and and this is difficult for me to say. I'm not picking on you because I mo I generally have people on here, and I'm like, oh, I watched uh, six or seven games last year, but uh, I just didn't catch Vandy last year. There was no reason to catch Vandy last year. Again, the Kansas State effort was good against a decent team that turned out to win a bowl game and finish eight and five. So that was a really nice win, and I did DVR it and watch most of that game. But after that, there was nothing to watch. There was no reason to watch Vandy football. Okay. All right. Uh, the season before, I'm sure, in going to a bowl game. I watch, if you go to a bowl game, I watch those for sure. Okay. Well, okay. Well, then sure. we'll, we'll get you a bowl game to watch this year since, you, you know, you can't be bothered to watch this. If you can beat somebody in the SEC early in the season and let's say you're sitting there at three and three, four and two, uh, I will make sure that I watch some Vandy football. <laughs> okay. You'll be watching a lot of Vandy football then this year. Now I remember the season before you had a really good game at Auburn. And I watched that game. That was a great game. The game you know, was, uh, win? was it Zach Cunningham. Yes. And made the blocked kick. That and was a great game. game. I watched it that game. The Cunningham rule that they've now banned that. I think it should be called the Cunningham rule. Oh, it was phenomenal. Why was they banned that, I have no idea. With everything that goes wrong in football in terms of players' safety, that right. they're banning. Guy. I've never seen a guy get hurt jumping over somebody else. Correct. Correct. Uh, the the air typically doesn't uh, break an ankle or do anything like that. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, yeah. So when you played a couple Thursday night games, one in particular against South Carolina, I think you did it more than once on the Thursday opening night. I'm yes. watching Vandy every play because I'm watching that game. <laughs> schedule more Thursday night games. They haven't scheduled any. They didn't schedule one last year and they didn't schedule one this year. So we 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 lose on Thursday night. So they quit scheduling that stuff. So Okay. <laughs> All right. We got uh Kate uh Pearson Halliburton from Last Word on College Football to cover Vandy for us here. Kate, uh, we hope to have you back. And I was gonna try to pin you down to say something negative about Vandy, but uh I guess I'll leave it at that. I was going to say, basically, do you have any concerns about this team? It sounds like you have no concerns. Well, I mean, there's always concerns. I mean, it's 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 we're we're talking about 18 to 22 year old kids playing a game, so there's always concerns. But I, I think we've got a great group of kids. I think we've got some talent. I think we've got a great group of coaches. I I I personally have to believe that that we're going to have some success this year. Now, people are going to make stupid mistakes, but, you know, and if we say anything, the media will hop on it and tell us that we're, we're talking smack. So it's, it's kind of, we don't need to do anything to cause concern because the media will find some sort of concern somewhere. So this is what I need to have happen, Kate. Next time you're on, we are going to advertise. We're going to blast it out on social media. And I need you to bring all your Vandy people online to join the okay. live chat and pump up some Vandy football. Okay. And even though it's going to be completely one-sided and it's going to be like a <laughs> unicorns and paradise for Vandy yes. football, I'll still love it. <laughs> and we'll have a good time. Uh, sounds great. All right. We appreciate it, Kate, uh, for playing along. And let me have a little fun with Vandy football. But seriously, these guys are legitimate athletes. We see what um, they've accomplished at the next level for many of these guys. We just witnessed the career of Ralph Webb, which turned out to be one of the most prolific in the history of the SEC. And um, yeah, Kyle Shermer, uh, definitely the best quarterback we've seen uh, in play for quite some time, throwing the ball downfield uh, for this Vandy Commodore team. Maybe the best since Jay Cutler. Fingers crossed. All right. Katie, <laughs> we appreciate the time. You have yourself a great day. Thank you. And too. we will be looking out for your work uh, with the rest of the crew there at the uh, last word in college football. You guys are very good to Mark Rogers TV. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. All right. Everyone else, I will let you know that uh, we've got uh, lined up a number of guests throughout the day. I have cut a promo because I don't have it in front of me right now what the lineup is for the rest of the day, but I believe we have conversations coming up at the live stream at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 and 8. We've got Washington, Texas, Boston College, Miami, 
and more for you from SEC, Big 12, and ACC Media Days. Kate, you have a great day, and everybody else, we will see you soon. Thanks, you too.